Several years ago, uh, my youngest, on a Sunday afternoon, was up in his room playing. We'd been to church. I'd come home. I had another meeting to go to, which is often the case on Sundays. Sure. can be go, busy go, for go. us. And I went back upstairs, and I put my tie back on, and I was walking back across in front of his room, and he said, Daddy, where are you going? And he was probably five. His name is Colson. And uh, maybe, yeah, maybe four. And I said, well, unfortunately, I've got to, I've got to run back out to a meeting, to a church meeting. And he had this green plastic ball that he'd been playing with since we'd picked it up at the store a few days ago. Those 99 cent toys can yeah. go a long way. <laughs> and he held it up and he said, well, there's a green toy ball meeting in my room right now. Oh. Will you come to that meeting? Oh. And uh, the choice between two really sure. good things that I needed to do. And on, sure. that, on that occasion, unfortunately, I had to be where I needed to be to take care of some church responsibilities. Um, but I can promise you that I was in the room that night for the green toy ball. Meeting. The green ball meeting. Yeah. Take the green ball meeting every time. Always take the green ball meeting. I love it, Jason. What if no one ever comes up to you at a conference like this and says, your book changed my life. Thank you so much for writing it. What if that never happens? But what if you change your life? What if you're the one? What if this thing, what if the audience is you? Paper, papyrus, stone, plates, tablets, all of it by hand. The founding documents of this country and all countries, those documents written by hand. I mean, can you imagine Thomas Jefferson at Monticello sitting there in his little office on his iMac? That's a Slurpee, like if he needed like a... I mean, can you imagine that? And he drafts it and then he emails it off to his boys. I've just finished my first draft of the declaration. Would appreciate your comments. Oh, well, right? <laughs> and then, and then what does Tom do? Does he go post on Facebook? Does he go on Twitter? Twitter, he, he's probably a Twitter guy, right? Jefferson goes on Twitter and he says, just knocked out the Declaration of Independence. Hashtag freedom. Hashtag July 4th. Hashtag Taco Tuesday. No! No! Boy, I wrote it in my bathrobe in my basement back in 2004. I had no idea that years later we would be talking not just about a, a movie, but about a movement. There are thousands and thousands of people around the country now that do exactly what uh, you described in the lead-in. They take a jar, they put it on their kitchen counter, they put their loose change, their small bills in it, and they fill it up for a year, and then they give it away anonymously to someone in need during the holidays. And the whole bus is chanting Roy's name! And he jumps off the chair, and the bus driver gets in her seat, and they start to roll away. And if this is a movie, all your moms are like bawling, this is my favorite part! I love this beat so much! She is bawling hardcore at this movie. So about a year and a half ago, I was in the car. I've always felt comfortable giving rides to strangers, hitchhikers, the homeless, whatever. And I was cruising down the road in Virginia where I live and I met this really cool couple that was wandering the country hitchhiking. And we had been in the car for 10 or 15 minutes, had the most fascinating discussion and we're sitting in a light. And I said, can we film this? Like, you're so interesting and I'm learning so much from you. Could we film this and like share it with the world? Like you are cool people. Yeah. And they were like, absolutely. So I had no setup, I had my iPhone. And I found one of my daughters, what's the little, like a scrunchie? <laughs> yeah. I found that yes. in like in the glove box and I strapped the phone to my rear view mirror. Oh my god! And we filmed about 20 minutes of discussion and I cut it and I posted it online and people loved it. And yeah. it kind of grew from that. And it's just been, I have met the most amazing people who look so different from me and they sound different from me and their background is different. But in the end, we're all the same. I kept wondering who in this room today feels a little blue. There are 1,500 plus of us in this room. There are some ladies around you who despite the fact that they see you right now, they feel alone and they feel disconnected. They feel some heartbreak, a death in the family, job loss of a spouse, sickness, theirs, or someone they love. 
a marriage that has come to an end, a faith that is shaken, I promise you, as we sit here, there are some, maybe you, who feel this way.